So Manchester United are ready to welcome both players. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Fabrizio Romano here as always to keep you posted on the transfer market. And today, guys, many important things to mention. Contracts being signed, deals being completed, crazy confusion on some stories. What happened with Zubimendi, Luis Diaz and more? Let's jump into it together. And so guys, time to sign contracts for many players, for many clubs, and so important, important Tuesday of the market. Let's start with Cole Palmer signing a new deal at Chelsea till June 2033, so nine-year contract. Now, for Cole Palmer at Chelsea, the agreement is done, is signed, is something that Chelsea already wanted to do at the end of the season. This is when they first approached the agent of Cole Palmer. Uh, they, didn't knew, they didn't need to do that because he already had a long contract till 2031. Uh, they agreed on that less than one year ago. So imagine that Chelsea are doing this because they want to reward Cole Palmer. They believe that he's been fantastic this season. Uh, his exploit has been something uh, really incredible for the club. Of course, they expected Cole to have a, a huge potential, but his season has been unbelievable. And so the club wanted to keep Cole, Cal Cole Palmer a longer contract, 2033 instead of 2031, but also a higher salary to make him feel at the best level possible at the club, one of the phases of this project, one of the most important phases of this project, English player. So Chelsea wanted to reward Cole the contract is signed and Cole Palmer will be a crucial, crucial part of the future at Chelsea. We had many rumors on uh, clubs uh, also from uh, abroad, also from uh, other countries interested in Cole Palmer, but there was never obviously a possibility for this summer. But also for the future, Chelsea wanted to guarantee to the player an important contract, a longer contract, an important salary. And so Cole Palmer signs new deal. While I'm recording this video, Matthijs De Ligt and Nusair Masraoui are signing their contracts with Manchester United. So it's the technical time for the agent to check the contract and then sign for the player and then the club's already signing all the documents but it's all good for the league and Masraoui who already trained with Manchester United squad in the morning so Manchester United are ready to welcome both players one Bissaka is already official to West Ham we had some uh, stories about a panic on that one in the last few days but West Ham were always in control with the director Tim Steiden working on that 15 million pounds is the fee for one Bissaka seven year contract and so Manchester United now ready with Masraoui and Matthijs De Ligt. But the big shock of the last 24 hours has been a refusal from Martin Subimendi. Liverpool have been working for one week in public and for more than one week in uh, private for Martin Subimendi. They had the feeling that Subimendi wanted to go to, to Liverpool, that he was very tempted by the project, tempted by the club, tempted by Premier League football, tempted by the new idea of football of Arnes Lot, of course. They have the legend uh, Jurgen Klopp uh, in their mind at Liverpool, of course. But what they want to offer under Arnes Lot is still something very interesting, ambitious and modern. But the player, Martin Subimendi, after thinking on that, after receiving also a lot of pressure from La Sociedad and after all these factors, including a new counter proposal from La Sociedad, but it's impossible to compare the proposal from La Sociedad to the one made by Liverpool. The salary is way lower, but Martin Zubimendi, very loyal to his club, decided to change his position and continue at Real Sociedad. That was a big shock for Liverpool because they had the feeling that the player wanted to come, otherwise they were not going to press like uh, that and now not going to Liverpool. Martin Zubimendi stays at Real Sociedad. Let me tell you also something behind the scenes of this story. At one point of the conversation, they also discussed the possibility to include uh, Stefan Bajcetic as part of the negotiation. Liverpool and Real Sociedad. There was a possibility to include him on the deal on loan, but Liverpool preferred to pay the release clause rather than giving Bajcetic on loan to Real Sociedad. And so everything collapsed immediately in terms of swap deal. Liverpool were prepared to pay 60 million euros release clause or above the release clause, but for better payment terms. But Real Sociedad only wanted to keep Martin Subimendi and they were successful in their attempt. On Liverpool, today we had a shocking story on uh, Luis Diaz coming from Spain. And as always, let me say, guys, this is in general, as I told you also Nico Williams a few days ago. In Spain, they say that Nico Williams said yes to Barcelona. And I told you, I don't have this news. In this case, on Luis Diaz in Spain, they are saying that he has an agreement with Manchester City. What I can tell you today is that I can't confirm an agreement between uh, Manchester City and Luis Diaz. That sources at Manchester City and sources at Liverpool are both denying 
Man City are denying an agreement with Luis Diaz and Liverpool are denying any approach for Luis Diaz from Manchester City, from Barcelona also we had reports. Liverpool guaranteed that they've received no approaches and they want to continue with Luis Diaz. For Barca, remind what I told you, that they are discussing internally several options because Nico Williams is now expected to continue at Athletic and one of these options is Kingsley Coman, one of the players appreciated by Hansi Flick. Let's see if Barca will decide to activate that option or try for a different kind of name. Name. Internal discussion still ongoing, but at the moment Liverpool has not received, received any formal approach from Barcelona for Luis Diaz. Let's see what Barca will decide to do. And same with Manchester City. They have not received any formal approach from Manchester City. One of the cases of the summer, probably the saga of the summer, is uh, Conor Gallagher. Guys, what I told you last night, now is everywhere in the media, is that Chelsea want Conor Gallagher to return to London. While I'm recording this video, is 4.30 um, p.m. in England and Chelsea are still of the same opinion if Atletico can't get the deal done for Conor Gallagher and let me explain to you this there is an agreement Chelsea Atletico on the transfer fee 42 million euros there is an agreement Gallagher Atletico on the contract the contract of Gallagher is 100% ready this is why he was at the Wanda Metropolitano at the stadium a few days ago and this is why they tweeted Gallagher on their account Atletico Madrid so everything is ready but now Chelsea say the deals are separate Gallagher is one discussion Felix is a different discussion the discussions for Joe Felix and Chelsea continue but if Atletico want Conor Gallagher they have to press the button sign the documents club to club because on player side is all ready and then sign Conor if you don't want to sign Conor in the next 24 hours the negotiations remain open Chelsea remain open to make it happen but Conor has to return to London he's under contract makes no sense to have Conor in Madrid if he's not signing with Atletico in few hours so let's see what happens now is a very tense situation Chelsea Atletico but for sure the situation remains open but really difficult and tense in terms of relationships and I will try to let you know what's going on on that story then guys many rumors on Atletico Madrid in case the Conor Gallagher deal doesn't happen N'Golo Kante as an option for Atletico I can tell you that Al-Itihad officials are sending a very clear message on Kante they sent this message when West Ham tried with an official bid to side N'Golo Kante and they are sending the same messages now for Atletico Madrid links not for sale. This, at least, is the position of al a member of the board, about the situation of Kanté. They want to continue with Kanté, and they don't want to lose Kanté, and they don't consider Kanté for sale. Let's see what's going to happen, but as of today, al are very strong on their position for N'Golo Kanté, considering him untouchable for the club. Then, one deal collapses, Ryan Cherki to Leipzig. Keep an eye on him, because PSG already wanted Cherki, then the deal collapsed, but... Let's see what PSG will do. Now PSG are closing the deal for the Zero Due. And important to say on Rayer Cherki um, that he was in the list of Red Bull Leipzig. The negotiations were ongoing, but never done. They had some doubts and they signed Antonio Nusa from Bruges. So Nusa to Leipzig and Cherki again on the market with an interesting situation to follow because he has one year left on his contract at Lyon. And so guys, let me know your thoughts on all these stories. I want to know your opinion on all of them here in comments. Remember to like this video, turn on the notification bell, subscribe to the channel. See you soon. Ciao.